Hey y'all, welcome back to Dots and Beyond. My name is Beth. Today we are going to be setting up my son's custom bullet journal for April with a fairy fountain theme. Let's go ahead and get started. As we get started, please remember, as usual, I have everything linked in the description box below in regard to supplies. I've also started with everything sketched out. That's just something that I do for me to make sure that I get everything in the right place. You can also see that I have got the paint supplies around me. We're definitely going to be tapping into the gold Calero watercolors that I love in order to make this happen give the page a little bit of that magical feel that we are going for. And if you've been following along with Kenny's journal setup for 2023, there's been pretty much an overarching sort of magical theme from beginning to end thus far anyway. I am starting off with one of my letter stencils. Most of these letter stencils I purchased in multiple packs that I found on Amazon and they range from eight to twelve dollars for 25 stencils, 12 stencils, 30 stencils, that sort of thing. Many of them are no longer available available in the exact pack that I purchased them, but if you do search for letter stencils, you'll definitely find varying packs that you can pick up that have many of the same stencils that I use in them. Now, I use stencils because it gives me a wide variety of fonts to choose from, and I absolutely hate lettering. It's just not something that I enjoy doing, and so I do use the stencils when I want to have different fonts on the page. Now my son Kenny had a little bit of a creative block this month trying to figure out what he wanted his April setup to be. It's one of the reasons that this is a little bit late. The other being the fact that we had to deal with a tornado a week ago that sort of disrupted our city. But we are getting this out to you. He even said to me today, mom, when are you going to get my video up for April? <laughs> so here I am told him, I said, I just have to do the voiceover and we'll go ahead and get it up as soon as I get that done. But when he finally did come up with a theme, that theme started off with healing waters or forest healing waters. And then he said the words fairy fountain. And I thought, ah, oh, that I can definitely run with. And yet it turned out to be much more difficult than I anticipated to find some inspiration images. And I can't tell you how many different phrases that I used to come up with the images that I am recreating. Sometimes I'm combining others or taking an image that didn't necessarily like this one did not have fairy wings. I added the fairy wings to this statue pouring this water on Google and across different search platforms. I even looked on Pixabay and Unsplash and I looked for magic fountain, magic pond, fairy pond, fairy fountain, scrying pools. <laughs> it was fantasy pools, fantasy water, all sorts of different search terms to try and come up with what we were going to use to do this setup. Now initially for this I was just going to do black, white, and gold. And what I'm doing here with these Calero watercolors is just adding a fair amount of water. With these gold metallic watercolors, the one thing you want to do is get them activated. So you just need to add some water, swish it around, give it a little bit of time to do its thing, and that activation gets to the point where you have that opacity in the gold paint that you're really looking for. Don't rush it. It'll happen faster than you think. And I'm going to use this middle one that I've pretty much not used for anything. You can tell which ones are my favorite and which ones are not. And if y'all hear anything in the background, the Dots and Beyond Felines, Faramir and Eowyn have decided it is zoomy time. They're gonna zoom, I'm gonna keep recording, and we'll just see how much of it we hear and how much of it we don't. So again, my original plan was to have black, gold, and white. So I intended to do the moon gold, and I was gonna do this larger font also in the gold like I'm doing here. And then I was also going to do the pond in gold as well. And as this went along and I started of getting more of the gold on the page, I really felt like I was going to ruin it if I added the gold to that pond. I do like to try to sneak in a quote on Kenny's cover pages. I never tell him what it's going to be. This quote is from William Butler Yeats in The Land of Heart's Desire. The full stanza reads, Come fairies, take me out of this dull world, for I would ride with you upon the wind. As the gold paint dries, I do add in some additional sparkles with a gold gel pen. This is the Uniball Signo gel pen, which is my favorite. And then honestly, y'all, I went to have a conversation with Kenny about what he wanted to do with this pond. <laughs> And funnily enough, he asked if we could paint it a bluish green color. Now I had actually mixed up a blue green color and done a test version of this pond on a completely different paper and I didn't like it. So <laughs> I lightened it just a little bit. This is a mix of a metallic white and a 
teeny tiny touch of viridian this sort of blue green color these are cheap artist loft paints from michael's they don't cost a lot of money i don't spend a lot of money on paint because i am not an artist and we are going to use this same color for all of our water portions of our fairy fountains moving forward so we'll have the black the white the gold and then this very light blue green color I admit I was still extremely nervous going in with this color blind. I just wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. Even upwards of a day or two later, I saw Kenny with his journal here a few days ago open on the dining room table and I was like, oh wow, that looks really good. <laughs> and it kind of surprised myself on uh, how much I actually do like the addition of the blue green. I do know that here on camera, it really just looks very shimmery. What I did was pretty much put an overall color of just the base blue green here on the pond and in some darker areas where there are ripples and stuff I tapped just a little bit into the viridian itself just to darken those areas just a little bit but keep it within the same color palette again I am not much of a painter I don't like to do the shadowing and the shading and all of the things that come with being a good painter or artist but I do like to have a little bit of the dimension if I'm going to do something like this and then and y'all before we moved on to the rest of the setup I only had one thing I really needed to do and that was run it by the person whose journal this is so I disappeared for a little bit to go have Kenny approve it and he really loved the blue green and so we are going to move forward with the rest of the setup and this is the final cover page. And again, now that I'm a few days removed from it, I really do love it. And I'm actually kind of impressed with myself. It wasn't the easiest concept to come up with. Like I said, he had a little bit of creative block in deciding on this theme. And I had some creative block in finding the right imagery for this theme. But I love this cover page to bits. Now everything should be mostly dry here, but when I'm working with paint, it's always safer to stick another piece of paper in between your pages as you move on. So this is just a page from an Archer and Olive notepad, which is the same size as my journal. I'm gonna tuck it in there and move on to Kenny's calendar page. Now last month in Kenny's journal, we did a much more simple sort of setup with everything. It was light and open and airy. I had a lavender and Lily of the Valley theme for him that he had asked for. And I'm gonna kind of follow that same setup with the calendar at least and make it a little more open and not have all of the vertical lines on the calendar boxes so it's a little more room to write and it looks a little more spacious and open we have a little bit of a fairy theme running for this april in our household and i don't know which way the inspiration sort of led one way or the other kenny has this fairy fountain theme in his bullet journal and I'm currently reading Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett so if you'll follow along with my reading journal content that'll definitely be a book that is going to circle back around in my April reading wrap up but yeah both of us have the fairies going on here in April 2023. As far as process on this page many of the steps are the same. I use the larger stencil for April and then the smaller stencil for the days of the week and then I sketched in a small potion bottle uh, reason being that this fairy I've drawn on the left standing underneath the moon which her hair becomes the river or the fountain again this is an image that I found on a google search I also don't think she had the wings I think I added the wings to this one as well I uh, found an image I needed and then turned it into a fairy is really what sort of happened there but she's holding a small bottle or vial of her fairy fountain water I just wanted to sort of take that and evoke a larger version of it and stick it over there on the side of April now I'm adding an ohuhu marker to the mix this is a 106 and the dual tip brush pens because I needed something that I could highlight with like I use a Tombow very light gray the N95 that's my favorite but I needed a much more warm color something that looked or matched well with the gold did a lot of testing with a lot of different supplies that I have and Ohuhu 106 is the one that came out on top and this here is what we call a tea break because I do drink the tea that is sitting on my desk when I'm filming my videos. Sometimes I forget about it. When I really get into the zone, sometimes I forget everything and I'm like, oh yeah, now my tea is gold. So as I get ready to paint this calendar page, I have a very serious question for you. And that is, do you believe in fairies? I've lived in a lot of different places in the world that have a lot of different myths 
and folklore. And one of the countries that I've not lived in, but I've always been fascinated by is Iceland. And I was watching a thing on the Travel Channel one time that talked about Icelanders and how they still believe in the fey folk or the fairies or the elves. And I was like, what? And sure enough, there is a 2000 study by the University of Iceland found that some 62% of the Icelandic population still believe in the presence of the fey folk or the elves and the Icelandic population is a very heavily educated population and they will leave gifts for their elves and their fey folk and I just find this belief in this ancient folklore fascinating and I want to know if you believe in fairies. And if you do believe in fairies, or if you don't believe in fairies, but you want to believe in fairies, how would you categorize them? And in the simplest terms, I'm going to say fairy good or fairy bad. Because in light of some recent popular literature, let's say, the fey folk are not necessarily painted in the most flattering light. So if fairies exist, are they kind and benevolent or are they manipulative and greedy? Let me know in the comments below. As you can see, we've moved on to another page. On the left side of this spread, we are going to have a notes page. We added this to Kenny's setup two months ago, I believe, to kind of round out, give him a brain dump page. Neither one of us liked the phrase brain dump. So for his journal, we are going with notes. And on the right side is a page for him to do some finance tracking. I wanted to leave him as much space on the notes page as possible to write. So our fairy element here is just at the beginning of each letter of these headers. And then I used this stencil that I have had in my collection far longer than I have been making YouTube content. And I honestly have no idea where it came from, but it does have a very decent corner flourish that I used just to give this page a little bit of a magical element without taking up too much space. The finances page is pretty simple. We have a spending log where Kenny can put in the date, the item of something that he purchased, the cost, and then indicate whether it was a need or a want. Then in the bottom right side, we have the dates of his paydays for the month so he can record what those amounts are. Again, as an hourly employee, his paychecks can often be different. And then the beginning balance and ending balance at the beginning of the month, end of the month, for both his checking and his savings accounts. For our magical water element on this particular page, I'm drawing a little bit of a fountain with the water floating up out of it into sort of a magical ball. Now on the previous pages, I was using the larger stencil of the two to fill in gold areas. I don't have that here, so I do still want to add some gold to the page. So I am filling in the framing on the notes page with the gold. And then we're just going to jump right over to our water element and paint it in with that light blue green color as well. I don't know if y'all can tell, but I have way too much of that blue green color mixed in. That viridian green was really dark and I ended up having to mix in an awful lot of the metallic white to bring that to the shiny sort of color that I wanted it to be. Now to finish off this page, I did some more sparkles and then drew some teeny tiny fairies with a gold gel pen. I'm going to continue to move our paint protector page one spread forward as we go along and it's time to move on to Kenny's weeklies. Now if you guys have been here for a little bit and some of you actually started watching my channel because of Kenny's first custom journal video, you know that his weeklies don't change that much. So the first thing you'll notice on this particular setup is this weird little Dutch door that we have here in the middle. We have added a task list to Kenny's weeklies. So his normal weeklies are sort of, you know, an eight by eight box ish or eight by 12, kind of depending on what we put on the page. So he fits a whole week on each page. So we have week on the left and we have a week on the right, but we have also added in this task list. And I just went ahead and 
pre-cut this Dutch door page. It is also eight spaces wide because again, he has very tiny writing. And that is what he's going to try to use this month and see if having a separate task list on each week is helpful for him. Did add a mini calendar to either side of that little task list flap so he has that for reference. And then otherwise, the daily boxes for each week are very simple. I just highlighted a line and then put in the date and the day of the week. And I left a couple of spaces for artwork. When I do this, I try to configure each page a little bit differently. So we have a different setup and a different shape of artwork. So here on the left, most of the days are at the top and I have a horizontal piece of artwork. And then on the one on the right, most of the days fall towards the bottom so that I can fit in a vertical piece of artwork. And then sometimes I will keep everything around the edges and just do one large piece of artwork in the center. Obviously I couldn't do this because we do have that Dutch door page there in the way. And then for this particular piece, I am having to blend my gold and our minty color or our blue green because the moons I've been painting have all been gold but the water I've been painting has all been the blue green and here I had the moon melting into it. Didn't really think that through obviously because I didn't think I was going to be using the blue green color but I do think I got the two to kind of blend together pretty nicely. And then on the right we have some stones around a pool and again I just used this gold gel pen to draw some tiny fairies sitting on top of those stones. As a final touch, and honestly is a very last minute decision, I also used this zig dot marker to go ahead and make Kenny some bullet points for his task list on either side of this little Dutch door. We are going to move on to weeks 17 and 18 for April, and honestly the functionality is exactly the same. So we're just going to go ahead and fade in the lines here for the calendar, the dates, the mini calendar, the task list, have all of that ready to go, and I'm just going to sketch in our fairy elements. Here on the left side for our fairy fountain element, it's not exactly a fountain. I decided I wanted to sketch in a magic well. I've always loved the idea of a magic well or a wishing well, so I decided I was going to put one here on this setup for Kenny. I did sketch in a little fairy sitting on top of the housing for the well and some sort of hanging pods, so to speak, that we're just going to call magic pods. And then over on the right, I found this very interesting sketch of this flower shaped water source on the floor of a forest. It really was a woman also holding a vial walking towards it. I just eliminated her out of the picture and used the water source on the bottom and then just drew a tree branch across the top to give the illusion that this is also in a forest. And then I had no intention of painting the petals of this water source gold, but it, this page was really lacking something without it. And so that was definitely the final touch to pull it all together. All right, our final spread for Kenny's April setup is definitely one that is more function over form. He definitely needs a lot of space to write, and that is where he keeps his playlist as well as his monthly reflection. I really wanted to bring back out that large stencil. I just really love this font and I'm glad I've gotten a place where I could use it. And so I put reflection and large letters all the way across the bottom. I'm repeating that same vial sketch that I had used on the calendar as well. Again, just to tie in some of those elements. And then we're sticking our piece of artwork way over far to the left. To the right of that, he will be able to put his playlist. And then on the right page, He'll be able to put his reflections for the month. For consistency, we're also going to repeat material. So I'm going to use that Ohuhu 106 for all of the headers, as well as the dot markers for all of our lists. And then I'm just going to make those headers with my natural print. So a playlist on the left. And then for the reflection page, we have liked, learned, lacked, and longed for, as well as major events. And I leave that major events up to him. In my journal, I put world events. In Kenny's journal, I'll put major events because he can choose whether they're personal, whether they're local, whether they're world, and he can just fill that in however he wants to. Of all of the sketches that I did or recreated today, this one was probably the more difficult of the two. Again, I stuck the fairy on the top of this fountain. It's not really what was on the original sketch, but it does sort of have a base of a twisting tree or branch and then a little bit of foliage on it as well as the rocks. And then it also had falling water coming down around <laughs> in a couple of different areas that I had to try to figure out how to paint. But like everything else, it ended up coming together in the end and I really 
really love the way that it turned out. So let's go back and flip through April 2023. I know Kenny and I both appreciate your patience. This is going up a little bit later this month for a myriad of different reasons. The great thing about this theme is that it's not necessarily tied to the month of April. It does read a little more spring or summer, but I think you could actually use this theme any time of the year, especially with this color palette. This color palette definitely does have cool tones to it if you wanted to put this in December or January. If you have made it this far in the video, first of all, I wanna thank you for spending part of your day with me wherever and whenever you are. Second of all, go ahead and drop me a fairy emoji down in the comments. There's a couple of those to choose from so that I know that you were here. And that is going to be a wrap on this magical fairy fountain theme for April 2023. From both me and Kenny, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next one.